Hallelujah. How great is our God. How great is our God. So the Lord told me to talk to you about spiritual warfare, which most folks in the church don't know nothing about it. That's why he got me talking about it. And my children know nothing about it. You see, on a battery, you got two pulses. One says negative and the other say positive. It takes the combination of both to produce power. So if you sit under a preacher who only talk about positive all the time, you may like it and be exalted, but you will live powerless. See, I will exalt you to obey God. And so the Lord showed me even in some of the things where I wouldn't address this as a whole, it's because one of the, the, the things I saw coming along my walk with the Lord in the, in the vineyard that he had called me to, and of course you've become uh, pretty much like what you fellowship with. And so one of the things I've always been told, and not that this is changing, but we have more balance here, that you don't fight the devil. You don't, because how can you fight the devil? You can't see him. How can you fight him and win? Because he's more powerful than any man in and of himself. So why would God put you in a fight that you can't win? Talk to me, somebody. Yet he who is in you is greater than anything that would come up against you. Isn't that the truth? But along in the teaching, the walking with the Lord, the learning word of faith and learning how to live victorious as a believer, as a minister, I also saw a movement called the deliverance movement. And unfortunately, with good, we bring a lot of negative things. Even with word of faith, with the, pro the prosperity and the good living, we brought, a, we brought an unbalance to it. Because you got people as a whole, all they want is some stuff from the Lord. They don't care nothing about walking with God and living for God. And that's an injustice to do that to anybody to tell you that things is going to be more important than the creator who created things. Well, that's like telling you to worship the moon and the stars and yet there's somebody who put them out there. Give me some help in here today. And so it was, I began paying attention to people who having all these deliverance services. Nobody's really getting delivered. Because how do you get delivered on Sunday and Monday you still need deliverance? Then you got the other naive that think there is no devil. Huh? Huh? Then you explain who got you cussing like that all day long. Talk to me, you don't believe it's a devil. Who had you acting like that? Huh? So you got extremes, yet the scripture teach that a balance that is in tilt is an abomination to the Lord. See, so God believe in balance. And so that's what I want to do, bring some balance about spiritual warfare. Because to have you to think there's nothing to contend with other than you just make a few good confessions and pray and just, just give sometime, that's all you got to do, then to tell you that's it, I've done you an injustice. Because the Bible talks about uh, warfare and being a soldier and endure hardness as good soldiers. Where's that hardness coming from? I mean, after you get saved, if everything's supposed to be all right, then why you're not all right? Did God change his mind about you? So, oh, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have saved you. So what's happening here? I think we have what you call the big picture and the little picture. And I think a lot of times you can get so focused on the little picture that you miss the big picture. <laughs> so let me help you with something. Now I know this is going to shock you because as much as God loves you, I want to say something to you. It's not about you. 
Ah, oh, somebody got mad there. Now I saw the jaws blow up. What? It ain't all about you. As, as important as you are. He has something else in mind. Did you know the Bible talk about two kingdoms that are colliding all the time? One is called darkness. That's where you used to be if you wasn't a child before you became a Christian. And if you're not a Christian, somebody got some problems with this, but I choose to believe what this Bible says. If you're not a Christian, I didn't say a new age or a believer in things out there that God loves us and because he loves us, he accepts us. Uh-uh. He left some ground rules that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that none is right in themselves, no, not one. So that means there's not a man or woman born into the earth don't need a savior. Then if that's so, who saves us? Then if he saved you, guess what? You are saved. But if you're not experiencing salvation, you're living without hope, without God, and without covenant in the earth. You say, what does that mean? That means there's some battles you fight, you're already a victim before it starts. There's no way to win as long as you like that. I used to live like that. It's called playing roulette with your life. The game of chains, seven or 11. You can tell I used to do it, can't you? <laughs> but James said, life is but a vapor of smoke. You're here today and gone tomorrow. Why would I want to ga gamble with something that I don't know the extent of how long it's going to be? For the Lord want to help all of us because he's about helping us. He's about helping us and helping us where we live at. Not where you want to be. He help you where you are. And that's the beauty of the Lord. So we've discovered there is an enemy to all man who's bent on cutting you off from God or keeping you away from ever knowing God. And that, and that his frustration on an ongoing basis is designed to do nothing but to forfeit the, the purpose God have put inside of you. Did you know when you, when you came out of your mother womb, God had already planted some things inside of you? Ah! And some of the frustration you did with it ain't the man you met or the woman. It's because you never tapped into purpose yet. So you walking around pregnant with something you don't even understand what's going on in you. And if you was just body only, you wouldn't have no problem. But God made you a spirit being. Fit and designed to live forever. And while we are on this walk called life, we are dressing for where we're going. Talk to me. Uh-huh. You know, you can look at an outfit on a man and tell where he's going. You can look at an outfit on a woman and tell where she's going. Talk to me. But this life is designed that you dress and rehearse for where you're going. Huh? You say, wait a minute here. I better start changing my clothes. I guess you should do that. Because this is but a vapor. It's nothing but a drop in the bucket in light of eternity. And the Bible said in Ecclesiastes, God set eternity in man. He set worlds inside of me and you. That ain't going to happen. That's in you now. Unlimited potential. It don't matter what color your skin pigmentation is. Inside of the real you, there's unlimited potential. Worlds. And God is behind it. Orchestrating it. And Satan is around it, trying to frustrate it. Did you get that? You have your Bible in Ephesians 6? 
So with that introduction, will you praise God for introduction? Come on. Come on, help me yield to the Holy Ghost now. Praise God for introduction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's set our attention on verse 10 of that particular book. Ephesians 6 and 10. Hallelujah to Jesus. Yes. It says, finally, my brethren. Finally, after everything is said and done. <laughs> what did he say? Be strong. Now, where your strength rests at? In the Lord. How you gonna have, how you gonna draw from strength on someone that you don't know how to lean on? See, there's some strength available to you, but you got to know how to access that strength. Talk to me. And you got to decide, I've fallen long enough, I'm through falling. You Do you know you can open your mouth and set some laws around you that can frustrate everything Satan trying to do against you? Do you know that? That you can open your mouth and set laws around pay attention to me you don't heard a baby cry before pay attention to me you can open your mouth and set laws to frustrate everything satan trying to do against you you can frustrate it and if you get begin if you begin to grow in an understanding of those laws you can not only can frustrate it but you can begin to walk above it where he can't even frustrate you with that no more. Why? Because you're being strong in the Lord. You're, learn, you're learning to draw from another power that mama didn't give you. See, mama ain't got nothing to do with this. Dad either. You get this from Heavenly Father. You get this from Papa. You get this from Big Daddy. Hallelujah. And he, when he say he's strong, he ain't playing games with you. He said, put it to the test. You don't believe I'm strong? Try me out. Try me out. Lean on me. See, will I let you fall? <laughs> Rest in me with your weakness and see, can I hold you? Somebody need to try that today. You need to quit fronting and give it to him. God want it all from you that's been hurting you. Turn it over. It's an act of your will. He don't violate it, but he will invite. He will beckon. He will give the invitation. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The power of his might. Hallelujah. Put on. You got to put something on. You got to do something with yourself. Yeah, that means we got to dress better. Huh? He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Wait a minute here. He's talking about people who say but still wrestling with stuff. For you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. Now that word talks about a ruling prince. Principality. Against powers. Against rulers of darkness against spiritual what wickedness where is it at in high places what does that mean they, they, they can be in places that you are unfamiliar with you can read over and over again in the bible where there were rulers say for instance like in the old testament in the book of daniel you see that daniel prayed for 21 days but an angel was dispatched and told him, said, Daniel, beloved of God, that the Lord heard you on the first day. Isn't that something? He said, God, God heard you and sent the answer on number one day you prayed. Now look at the believers around here in the church. If the Lord will only hear me, what you basing that on? Because I don't see anything different. That means you now got to learn the ways of God. Because he can be working when you don't see any difference. You say, what do you call that? Trusting in him. Another word, faith in him. 
Another word, confidence in him. Confident that God is not a man. That he play games with me. See, so Daniel prayed and God said, day one you were heard. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me these 21 days. But now I'm here. An angel was fighting Satan over the prayers of a man. We have no idea the things that goes on around our life. Because this part of our life is not really an interest to us. Until all hell break out, then you don't know what to do. Because swimming lessons are not learned in a current. You don't tighten up on your backstroke in a river that's trying to take you under. Your backstroke got to already be tight. Tell your neighbor what I said. Your backstroke got to already be tight. And so look at what if, what if Daniel would have stopped on day three and said, oh, well, God, sometime he answered and sometime he don't. Sometimes you feel the Lord is answering your prayer and sometimes you won't. And he walked away. And guess what? He walked away from his miracle. He walked away from his job. He walked away from his healing. He walked away from his promotion. He walked away from his, his, his new home. He walked away from the car. He walked away from whatever. And that's how easy it is to walk away because your senses wasn't tangalized. That God said, all right, feel me, feel me, feel me because I'm answering you. That's right, D. Wow. Because that's the way it is for a whole lot of people. And look at the people who God love them. God is in their corner. God has already given them the victory. And they're walking away with their head on down. Oh, well, the Lord. And you know what the devil do? Then he pounce on you and tell you, ah, oh, God ain't answering you. Look how you've been living for the last year. And he make your answering, getting an answer from God based on performance only. And God answers people every day of the week who ain't earning anything other than he love them. And they're saying, they're saying, Lord, I ain't living like I should. I ain't perfect, but I know you love me. And out of your love for me, you will help me. Because if God answers people based on being perfect, who will get it? Uh-huh, look at your neighbor because I want you to see the head shaking so you know you ain't by yourself. <laughs> Who would get answers based on being perfect? None of us can be perfect in ourselves, but how many of you glad when Jesus say, it's finished, that means everything that was needed to make you acceptable, he did it. And you ain't got to crawl to God. You ain't got to beg to God. And you ain't got to agonize to God. He loves you now. He said, come before me with praise in your mouth. Come before me with thanksgiving in your mouth. Come before me acknowledging I'm God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lift those hands and praise him. Lift those hands and praise him. Lift those hands and praise him. Lift those hands and bless him. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercies endure forever.